Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today Podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. Frankie Costa has been a dental technician since 1986. He has owned and operated three full-service laboratories. At AA Dental Design, he has built a powerhouse focused on processing digital and conventionally impressed restorations by utilizing the CEREC InLab to its fullest. Every restoration is processed with the CEREC InLab system, which has created his motto, All CEREC, All the Time. He is a software beta tester and certified advanced trainer for Serona and Patterson Dental. He has founded and moderates CEREConDemand.com, which is a CEREC educational site for all professionals in the dental field. He has also established the CEREC On Demand Educational Center in California, where he is a basic, intermediate, and advanced trainer for the CEREC InLab and the CEREC Chairside Systems. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Frank Acosta. Frank, welcome to the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you it's for having a, me. It's a pleasure to finally be able to have you here. We've been going back and forth trying to nail down a time, and it seems like it's it's always um, it's always a crazy time, yeah. and especially these last five months. But we appreciate you coming on the show. No, like I said, thank you very much for having me. I mean, you know, we have been going back and forth. I think ever since Chicago, we... We we said, hey, let's let's see when I can come on the show, and uh, and 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 thank you again, you know, for for not forgetting about me. So <laughs> no, it's 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 an honor having you here. We really really appreciate you taking the time. We we were very excited to finally meet you there in Chicago. We met so many so many great professionals that we only knew online, and then finally had the opportunity to meet up. And and when we when we saw you there, it was it was great. We we actually heard a little bit. Uh, one of your keynotes, uh, and uh, yeah. it, was, it was great. Very, very exciting. So uh, since uh, February, a lot of things have changed. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, things have been a little crazy. You know, it's kind of like I, I like to, I like to call it that. You know, I, I don't like to use the movie, but you know, I was watching Avenger, and the first thing I thought about was the day that they announced that they were shutting down. It was like if Thanos just kind of snapped their finger, his finger, and all of a sudden made the. Uh, made the dental profession disappear for a little while. And then out of nowhere, uh, somebody came. I don't know if it was Iron Man or who it was, but somebody came, snapped the fingers, and we've been swamped ever since. So I don't know what to tell you on that. <laughs> pretty pretty interesting turn of events. Yeah. No, it has been. I would have never thought, you know. I mean, you know, I remember, you know, my dad back in the day when I was younger, when I first started and stuff, you know, he, he used to say to me, you know, in our profession, in our profession, People always will need teeth. So we'll, we will always work. We will always be, you know, and and for, for us to just get shut down the way we did, that that was that was interesting. I, I would have never imagined that. So, you know, hey, there's always a first for everything. Right. And it's uh, it's great that we have you on. And I always like to start with understanding a little bit of your background, where uh, where you got started. So I'm, I'm looking at a number 1986. How yeah. did your journey begin? <laughs> Well, I might have started even a little bit earlier than that. I don't know. You know, my dad, my, my parents immigrated from Cuba. And uh, when they came, when they got to the United States and stuff, they knew a profession. Uh, when they first started, they, they actually worked at a, at, a, at a factory, a Fuji factory and stuff. And so uh, because not knowing the language and stuff like that, they, they didn't really want to get into the dental uh, lab world. But one day my mom, you know, it was kind of funny. My dad, he used to... Um, he used to actually, you know, when he was in the factory, he would look at people and say, hey, you know, that tooth in the front there, you know, I can fix it. <laughs> so <laughs> he would actually make molds and, and make flippers for everybody and stuff like that. But so so I remember being in the dental field. I mean, I mean, knowing about what my parents, you know, did for since, I mean, as far as I can remember. But yeah, so when I was 16 years old, my dad gave me a car and, and uh, you know, like I said, I thought I was just going to be driving around this car for free and and do my thing and get to hang out party and do all this stuff. And the next words out of his mouth was, you know, this thing needs to get paid. So he gave me a job at the laboratory, you know, and my very first job, like, like any very good dental technician, uh, he gave us two jobs or he gave me two jobs. One of them was making models and the other one was cutting the, the metal screws off of PFMs. And so he would mark it with a, like a little red pencil all the way around. And he would, he would give me this disc. 
And so, you know, not to say that I'm old, but, you know, I am a little old, right? And uh, there used to be a, a handpiece that had this little rubber wheel that would turn the handpiece. And so as you were cutting this metal uh, uh, off of, and you were scared because, you know, you were just looking at this disc and the disc would break and hit you in the eyeball and stuff because you were supposed to be wearing, you know, glasses, but, you know, <laughs> because I worked for my dad, you know, that, that it is what it is, right? So it, it bothered me. <laughs> And uh, and, the, and sometimes even the, the little rubber wheel would come off and just smack you in the face. So oh, that's, wow. I, that's that was my intro to uh, to dental to, to the the dental lab of the world. Wow, when you were 16 years old. Wow. Yep. yep. And I'm, wow. I'll, I'll say my age. I'm about to turn 49. <laughs> wow. Congratulations on that. That's amazing. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. So yeah. so you, you you start at 16, obviously the, the first job is the, the model, the model room, right? That's what you do. Yep. How, how did you, did, did you know from that moment that this is what you were going to do or no. w- when did this click? When did this no. click? <laughs> no, my dad was funny. You know, my dad always, he would look at me and, and one of the things he would say to me all the time is, you know, stay in school, you know, become a dentist, become a dentist. And so he was just like, you don't want to do this all your life and you got to do this and and so I, I, that's what I thought that my path was supposed to be. You know, it was to go down, to, to go down. So when I graduated high school and stuff, I did a little bit of the college thing. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I would go to school and then I go to the lab and then I go back to school and then go go to the lab. You know, like I would have morning classes or sometimes in the afternoon, I, I would just go back and forth. I was just community college, you know, doing my thing. Uh, after about I would say two years. Um, one day I was like, you know, I, I have a profession. You know, I was already learning how to stack porcelain, lear- learning how to do dentures, learning how to do all these different things. And so I decided to just, you know, leave school and, and just become full time. Um, it was very interesting, too, because my dad at the time, you know, he he didn't really want to have a full service laboratory anymore. And uh, and I and I kept telling him, you know, dad, you know, let's let's open up a, a removables lab. And, and so, because he did it for a while and then he got rid of it. And I told him, you know, I have so many people that call and ask us, do we do dentures? Do we do partials? Do we do relines? And so um, next door opened up and I decided, okay, you know what? I'm just going to hire some people. And, and I, I started my own lab, right? You know, wow. right next to my dad. And my dad kept looking at me going like, what are you doing? I'm no, no, no. We're just, I, I'm just going to own this, this section right here. But, you know, <laughs> together we work together. You know, it, we, we became a, the very first full service laboratory um, at, at that time. And uh, I mean, the rest was history, right? We, we created a big laboratory, but it was a conventional lab. You know, it was analog. It was uh, just a lot of cases coming in. It was kind of chaos when, you know, like most laboratories, you know, we, get, we know how to bring in work sometimes, but sometimes we don't, we're not business people, right? So we don't know how to, how to control the whole thing. And so that's what I come across, you know. Uh, throughout the years, my parents weren't business. You know, they they knew how to make teeth. That's what they knew how to do. But you know, to basically grow a business, you know, I do a lot of traveling and stuff, and I go to a lot of laboratories, and it reminds me of of that lab back in the day. You know, uh, it was a lot of fun, but at the same time, it was a little chaotic. Let's put it that way. Pretty taxing. Pretty taxing oh, on yeah. the body, on the mind. Oh yeah. No, it was it was wow. crazy. It was crazy. So so it but, was. Go ahead. So it was when you were in community college, when you two years into your community college career that you decided I'm a dental technician already. Yep. Like I, I just figured, you know, I just need to make some money because my parents were always like this. Right. OK, you want to go to school. They would tell you, go to school, go to school. But if you want to go to school and you don't bring me straight A's, I'm not paying for that school. And so I definitely wasn't a straight A student. So I was I was spending a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, hell no. You know, I can't be doing this. So, you know, that's when I decided, hey, I'm just going to make some money and, and start my life now. And and that that was that, you know, because, again, you know, when I first started, you know, I thought that that's, you know, I was going to go to school and I, they just brought me in and said, hey, you know, just this is good for now. But later, you know, you should go to school. You should, you know, graduate. And basically, my sisters were the same way. My parents brought, brought them in and they're all dental technicians and and they're all in this industry. So wow. that's kind of how we all went down the same path. Wow. So, that's that's pretty interesting. So it's, it's, it's a family affair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a family affair. <laughs> wow. And and so you're second generation or or, or is there is there more in, in the no, lineage? So, 
Yeah, so I'm second generation. My parents, you know, um, they they still, you know, they still. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll get to this laboratory, you know, later on. But but uh, yeah, they they're still, you know, sitting down at the bench and doing their things. My mom does a lot of numbers, uh, but now this laboratory has a lot more family members. Let's put it that way. So, but <laughs> where I am second generation. Yeah. Wow, wow. second generation dental technician professional. That's amazing. Yes. That's. That's 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 pretty awesome. The the influence of the parents and and the surroundings, the, the nurture that yes. that uh, that certainly took you that direction. So coming from from that uh, background, that that foundation where you didn't have computers and you didn't have scanners and you didn't have uh, milling units and and you didn't have all these things, uh, an analog foundation. Uh, and now, I mean, we're going to get into the the whole Seric <laughs> in just a moment, but. How has that impacted your present success? You know, it's it's, it's interesting, you know, because a lot of people ask me that, right? And so, you know, one of the one of the things that that happened to me, you know, was listen, you know, us dental technicians, you know, and I and I say us because I I, I do listen, I do hear a lot of you know family owned you know dental technicians and and dental laboratories that sort of you know did the same thing that we did, right? All we knew how to do was just make teeth work 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 and 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 take a vacation by you know maybe driving out to vegas on a friday night after work and coming back on sunday to then go back to work i mean that's just the i, I used to call it the lab life or the dental technician life you know in in my world you know i did analog for for many 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 years and in 2008 you know my dad was sitting at the bench and he had a heart attack and uh and when he had a heart attack sitting at the bench it was about 10 o'clock in the morning you know, it was one of those crazy things. And I've said this story many times when I do lectures and stuff like that. You know, my my dad, you know, he, he gets rushed off into the, to, to the ambulance and to, goes to the hospital. And when we get to the hospital, you know, we didn't really grow a business that, that would sustain itself if it wasn't for me or if it wasn't for my dad or, or if it wasn't for my mom or somebody in the family and stuff, you know. So I remember my dad was, you know, being, you know, taken off. Uh, into the surgery and uh, and my mom looks at me and she's like, you know, what are we going to do? And I looked at her and I said, no, you know, you'll be fine. And she goes, no, 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 no. The laboratory. Like, what are we going to do? Because, I mean, you think about it, you create this business that is more or less a job for yourself, right? A job that we don't, we, we want we want to say it's a business, but what it is, it's really a job that you created from nine to five or from whatever time you start working to whatever time you, you, you go, you leave, you go to the house or whatever. And so that's what we had. We had a laboratory that that just didn't know how to run itself or do, didn't have the people around us. Uh, even though we had a lot of technicians, we kind of didn't know because everything kind of went through because my dad was an old school, real old school, you know, the the kind that was like, I need to touch everything, right? It was kind of like, I don't want, uh, there's no case that doesn't leave this laboratory that I didn't put my fingers on it, right? Right. And so that was his right. mentality. So. A lot of the technicians that we had, they didn't even know how to finish the crown because they didn't they never were were asked to. Right. It was kind of like it just went through the lab and went through my hands. And then he was the final one that did it. So even me, I knew how to finish a crown. I knew how to finish, you know, cases and stuff like that. But at the end, it was never the exact crown that he did. So that mentality and stuff, you know, was something that was engraved in me uh, for a very long time. And when this something big happened in our life you know i always I, I sat in his bench for a couple of weeks before he was able to come back and all i remember thinking to myself was you know this can't be it you know this can't be the way that the dental lab is supposed to be we're not supposed to be sitting here you know working while your dad you know is is in there because we all know laboratories can grow in eight years but it can be lost in two weeks you know just because you can't meet deadlines or the doctors, you know, it, it is what it is, right? Um, but but long story short, you know, it, it sort of like was the first steps to to looking for something different. And when we talk about digital, that was one of the things that I sort of started looking at because I remember, uh, you know, it was you know CAD CAM first started hitting the market, you know, or or becoming a little bit more where we were aware of it because the technician or the uh, reps would come in, and I uh, remember it was a Seric rep, you know, he rolled into my lab. My dad had just come back and and I thought he was going to change. Right. I thought he was going to be like, you know, hey, man, I just got surgery. I got this. I, you know, there's no more. You know, I'm going to enjoy my life because I don't know. No, he went back right back to making teeth. And and I never forget, you know, my rep came in 
And it was a Sarek rep, and he straight gave me a crown. And he's like, oh, check it out. You know, look at this little box. It was a little box about this big, you know. And he's like, he's like, look, this crown was made by this. And I remember going to my dad, and I, and I looked at him, and I said, hey, dad, check this out. You know, look at this crown. You know, this this was made. And, and I'll never forget that day because, you know, as all good dental technicians, we have our loops, you know, we're looking down. And then all of a sudden, he kind of looks up like this. And I have the crown right in his face, and he looks up at it because his loops are like right here. So he's like this, because that's all we do, right? That's how we know how to look at people when we have loops. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then I think he looks at it and he says to me in Spanish, "Eso es una mierda," which basically means that's a piece of crap in in, in Spanish, right? And uh, so I looked at the guy. I was like, "Hey, you know, it is what it is, you know." But um, but I always stuck to my head that you know, hey, digital is going to come. Why not? Why can't we go digital? You know, why can't we mill something? And then add our own beauty to it. Eighty percent tool, you know, twenty percent our hands, right? And uh, and 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 I remember during that time, you know, you would go on to you know different websites. I'm not going to mention them, you know, by name and stuff like that. But different website, and they were so anti uh, digital, right? Because you know they were like, you know, you got to lick your brushes, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's all customized. And I get it. I mean, look, I lived that life for a very long time. But, you know, when when things happen in your life, sometimes it sort of makes you think about what's going to happen in the future. Right. And uh, and the next part of this story was very, very interesting. You know, that same year after my dad got his operation, uh, my mom ended up with breast cancer. And um, and so, you know, the reality behind the story. Right. You know, you know, at that point, I sort of thought to myself, like, I can't believe it. You know, my parents are getting older. And to be honest with you, you know, they're 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 more worried about the laboratory and their future than sort of their own health, you know, because they're just worried. They're like, what's going to happen to us? Why can't I do this or why can't I do that? And and again, our business is all about, you know, you know, hands. And, and, and I mean, the way that you stack porcelain and the way that you do this and I have great conversations with a lot of, you know, high end techs that I know, you know, personally and stuff. And we do have this conversation all the time. But if something that big in our life sort of made me realize that I was done being a dental technician. And so I uh, I said, if, if this is the way our business is supposed to be, because we are we are the be all right of the whole entire thing, then I'm done. You know, and um, I left, you know, and I told my parents, you know, listen, you know, I think you should sell the laboratory. Um, and, and again, they didn't create a business, but, you know, somebody wanted to buy it. And what they wanted to do was you know, just buy the, you know, basically buy the, the equipment, you know, maybe hopefully buy some, some stuff, but you weren't selling the business. You were just going to get some money for the stuff that you had in there. And that was that, that was in a business. And, uh, well, long story short, you know, I, I took a little break. Um, I moved, I moved, uh, uh basically I went home and, and, uh, just decided what I was going to do. And I couldn't believe what my next choice was, right? Because my next choice was I bought an in-lab system. And the goal, and the goal was to be a couple minutes away from my house, right? So I rented out this little, little one place, you know, and I bought a milling system, you know, and and I never forget, it was in 2010, and um, and I looked at my, I looked at myself, and I was like, I'm only gonna have like, oop, I dropped you, I'm only, I'm only gonna have uh, a couple doctors, and I'm just gonna make um, teeth for them, you know, and that's it, you know, and I'm gonna mill it. And I'm not going to stack porcelain. I'm just going to mill it, you know, put some anatomy to it, do some stuff, and then just charge, you know, uh, 110 bucks for it, stain the glaze out the door, you know. And that's what created the whole digital flow for me at that point, you know. Wow. And that was that. Wow. The rest rest is history, but I'm about to tell you that history. (laughs) You're you're about to tell me that history now. Absolutely. So. Wow, it's very it's very impactful how how you 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 are sharing the story because it, it I mean you, you have such a such a energetic uh, spirit to you but this yeah. this is definitely not a simple conversation to have no. I mean you're looking at your father deteriorate at the bench and then yeah. shortly after your mother's health is uh, is is in question as well yeah. Yeah. what what was going through your mind uh, as and were you married did you have a family at this time? Yeah. So, so at that time I was actually a uh, divorce, right? Cause that's the other part of, uh, of the dental lab, right? If you're, if your your wife is not in the business, she kind of doesn't understand the hours that you work and stuff like that. So 
uh, at the time I had, I had just, uh, gotten a divorce. Um, so I actually had uh, custody of my kids, you know, at the time and stuff, you know? And so, uh, I lived, you know, five, again, five minutes away from my laboratory. So I needed to be able to make time with them and stuff. And it was just a, it was just a different time in my life at that time. Right. Um, when I started up that, that, that business, um, I didn't really know what direction it was going to go, but it was supposed to be simple. It was supposed to be, I'm going to scan something, make a crown, stay in place <laughs> and out the door and make some money. And, and, and at least I was able to, you know, enjoy my two little ones. And, and that was that, you know, but, but yeah, it, it was a, it was a different time uh, of my life. And sometimes, like I said, something big has to happen for you to sort of stop and look around. And then when you look around, that's when you realize that there is something different out there, you know? And so that was, that was, that, that's how I was at that moment. Yeah. Wow. Very, very interesting. So your first choice was I'm going to go get a Sarah unit and I'm going to, and at the time it was an in-lab unit, uh, was, an in-lab yeah. unit. And yeah. I'm going to figure this thing out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to figure I'm it out. Going... I'm, going to, I'm going to make crowns with it. Everybody's bashing on it. You know, everybody's saying that it's a piece of crap, you know, this and that. And I, I just kind of took it and said, yeah, you know, at the end it's a tool. And, uh, you know, and, and so I looked at it was, you know, let me see how far I can get with the crown and then let me see what I can do with it after it comes out. And if I can do something with it, then it should work out. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to cut metal. I don't want to, I don't want to add porcelain. I don't want to do none of that crap. You know, I did it for way too many years. So it was what it was. So, so from the moment that you started, uh, with, with that, with that small room, in yep. that small room with that with that one machine with the idea of just servicing a few doctors and now yes. we have Sarek on demand your yeah. keynote speaker you're, you're you're speaking all over the country you're you're having a conversation with people all over the world and mentoring not only yeah. having <laughs> conversations but mentoring so many different dental professionals not only dental technicians but also uh, doctors yeah. and, and so many different professionals at the dental uh, uh, industry in the dental arena. What what has that journey been like from that first day when you turned on the switch to <laughs> right now that you're on the Dental Today podcast? Well, I mean, you know that that's a good that's a good one, yeah, because it, it has been a fun ride, right? You know, um, when I first bought mine, you know, again I had a certain idea, and then you know my parents uh, they got to that that my mom you know went through whatever she had to go through and stuff like that. And I remember, uh, you know, they, so they basically sold their lab, you know, um, it more or less just got bought up by pieces and it wasn't really something that they got, Oh, look, I'm buying it. And somebody took it over. Everybody, everybody that was calling just wanted pieces of it. Right. Well, as I was kind of doing my thing, you know, um, so, so, <laughs> so I basically started hearing about Sarek and, and I start reading again, you went online and, and you started hearing about Sarek and, how Sarek doctors are trying to take laboratories out of business and all this stuff. And, and, and it was just all this weird stuff, right? I would go, uh, since I, since I bought an in lab, it sort of was my, my first journey into the whole Serona world at the time. Right. And so, you know, just like every other laboratory, you know, you, you thought that Sarek was, was the devil because you thought to yourself, you know, I mean, to, to, to say the truth. I mean, I, it is what it is. Right. You know, I used to think, because the problem was that you would walk into a Sarek doctor's office and you would ask the Sarek doctor, hey, you know, I'm, I'm so-and-so. I have an in-lab system. Let me do the cases that you don't want to do. And their main response was, no, 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 I don't need a lab anymore because I have a mill. You know, I got this, I got that. So it sort of started in my head, started questioning myself. Like, you know, I think I love the whole flow of being able to scan something, being able to receive something and then being able to mill it where I don't have to sit there and do models. I don't have to do this, that. And so I loved it, but I didn't really understand how, how to really, you know, connect with those doctors. Right. Mm. And, uh, I didn't know how to get past the front door. Let's put it that way. You know, like all, like back in the day, you would, you would create this beautiful model with all these beautiful crowns and you'd knock on the door you'd sit down. The front office girl would look at you. Yes. And then you would say, um, yeah, I want to talk to the doctor because I want to, you know, see, I'm a dental technician or I own a dental laboratory. Next thing you know, they're like, yeah, sit down. And, and the doctor maybe comes out, maybe, <laughs> you know, <and> he takes <laughs> you into a room and he looks at your case and he's like, oh, that's very nice. You know, so how much is this? And you're like, oh, you know, 200 bucks. And then all of a sudden he's all, well, I'm doing it for a hundred bucks. I mean, my laboratory does it for a hundred bucks. 
So then you look at them, done deal, <laughs> right? You're like, I'll do it for 99. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I joke about that, but but it is kind of like a reality that we face as dental laboratories back in the day. You know, people would just be trying to get a, an account for a dollar less or whatever, you know. And I, and again, I get it. L- listen, at the end, you know, we're all trying to survive and stuff. And so, you know, I, I always hear a lot of people complain about it and all this stuff, you know. But it was a reality what you saw out there. And so what I sort of wanted to do was I wanted to talk to these doctors, but not in that in that way. Right. What I wanted to do was I wanted to go in there and I wanted to tell them that because they were digital, I was digital. And because they were they were they understood the workflow, my laboratory would understand their workflow. And I'm just here for them. Right. And so I didn't know how to how to really do that. Well, long story short, you know, I found out a good friend of mine, Dr. Daniel Vasquez, uh, he, he used to be one of our, our clients from way back when. And I and I heard that, you know, he had bought a CEREC in one of the study clubs that we were in. And they were saying that he really knew how to use his CEREC. So uh, one day I said, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go visit him. And I remember showing up to his office, right? And like I walked in and he was just like, uh, yeah, come on back, you know? And so he's taking me through the through his office and he, and he stops and he shows me his mill. And then he's like, look, you know, I make these crowns and I'm the man and, and I'm, I'm <laughs> awesome. And, and I, you know, I'm a steric doctor. And, and it was, it was awesome to see the enthusiasm that he had, but my question wasn't so much his enthusiasm. My question kind of was, okay, how do we work together? Right. And so right. I asked him and he said to me, he straight looked at me and he said to me, you know, the problem is that we don't speak the same language. And I'll never forget those words because I didn't really understand. I was like, wait a second, just because I'm Cuban doesn't mean I don't know how to speak Spanish. And he's Mexican, <laughs> right? So I'm like, uh, so I kind of tell him, I'm like, I'm like, hey, bro, you know, we speak the same. No, he's all Frank. You don't understand. He's all the Seric doctor is is in their own little world because they're making a commitment towards a w- digital workflow. And I right. said, and I looked at him and I was like, OK, so what does that mean for me? And he goes, OK, I'm going to tell you this. He's like, you see this patient that I have right here? Uh, I'm going to scan the patient. And once I scan the patient, I'm going to Sarah connect it to you. And it was right when Sarah Connect first came out. It was like 2000, maybe maybe like 2011, 2012. And, uh, and he said to me, I'm going to Sarah connect it to you. And he goes, and what I want is my contacts to be, you know, speckles of green and my occlusion to be a light blue. And at that moment, I knew what he said. If I wasn't an in-lab user, I would have no idea what the hell he was saying. Because I, if, if I, let's say if I own three shape or if I own some other, some other system, I would be like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Just send it to me. I would probably ask him. So what do you want the, the spacer to be on the contacts or something, you know? And, uh, he Sarah connected it to me. Once he Sarah connected it to me, I, I, uh, I went back to the laboratory. I downloaded the case. I milled it. You know, I just did the same thing, but just did it model it. And, uh, when I milled it out, I remember crystallizing it. And I remember opening up my the little box that, you know, we put our teeth in, right? And I opened it up. And after I, I, I looked at it, I put it in there, I closed the box, I opened it. I didn't really know what to do because it was the very first case that I had ever gotten that I wasn't, I didn't make a model, right? And so one of the things that I did notice too was that I did the case in, in like under an hour, right? And so I got excited. I went back to the doctor's office. I gave him the crown and he like, oh, here you go. And he's like, he kind of looks at me. He's like, what are you doing here? And I go, no, I just, I finished the crown. So, you know, here it is, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and I remember him looking at me and going, wait, don't all you labs ask for two weeks? <laughs> he goes, so, so he goes, so I thought I told the patient to come back in two weeks. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. So I left. Right. And, uh, and when I left, uh, he called, I get a text from him and he shows me the x-ray and he shows me a picture of the crown. And, and at the bottom, he says, now we speak the same language, right? Wow. And, uh, and, and that, was, that was it for me right there, man. I, 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 my, I made it my quest, you know, while every, every lab, laboratory out there was, was saying that they hate Sarek, I basically put that, and that's where all Sarek all the time comes from, right? I would just basically, and Sarek on demand sort of grew from that as well, Um I opened up right next to my laboratory. Just it was just I, I rented this one section, and all I did was just teach Sarek doctors how to use their Sarek, and that was the goal, you know. Wow. And that's where Sarek on demand came from. And and uh, 
And, uh, you know, to even go even further with that, you know, um, you know, there was a doctor that came into one of our first courses and I, I'll never forget. And so my, my plan was I'm going to teach these doctors and I charged them. I actually charged them, you know, a pretty good penny so that they would learn. So I would call Patterson branches and I would say, Hey, send me your doctors that are pissed off. Right. They're, they're, I, I would not <laughs> say any, any bad words or anything <laughs> uh, Sorry, I, that were upset. Not this. <laughs> that were uh, upset. That, yeah, that they were upset, right? Uh, I know it's a family show, bro. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and uh, so they would, all the reps would send me their doctors and they would say, hey, sign up for this course. He's going to teach you, right? He's just going to teach you how to stain, glaze. He's going to teach you how to use the software, all this stuff. And so my very first course, uh, I think it sold out in like a week or something like that. Wow. And so I had like about 12 doctors in this particular room here. It's a little different now than what it was back then. It was just a bunch of tables. Now, if, if, if you see this room, there's computers and then there's all this stuff. And I have an operatory now in here for education. I got a, I got a CT scanner and everything. But, but I'll never forget that very first class because uh, as I'm showing them, I'm showing them how to use their CEREC, uh to the fullest, right? I'm showing them how to do single units. I'm showing them how to do bridges. I'm showing them how to do like six unit cases, you know, like all this stuff. And the last case that I showed them was a six unit anterior case. And we were designing it and we were doing all these things, right? And um, and so the whole room, all you hear is click, 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 because the mouse was just click, 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 click. And this guy sitting in the back row gets frustrated. And he basically takes his mouse and he just chucks it. And he's like, and he goes, you know what? <laughs> and he goes, you know what? Bottom line is I didn't sign up to be a dental technician. I just wanted to learn how to do a single unit and, a, and an inlay. When I get cases like this, I'm just going to send it to you. And I, I'm like, I remember sitting here looking at him and going, oh, it is on now. You know, because I just found out the secret sauce, right? You know, I just found out. We educate them. We educate them how to be dental technicians, how to be better, you know, at what they do. And, uh, yeah, it's Eric on the man sort of grew from there. Uh, wow. We went. Uh, I brought in Jay Black from Florida. You know, I told him, "Hey, bro, yeah. let's let's work together. Let's see, you know, how we can we can grow this." And 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 it just it just kept going. Um, but the reality behind it was that I didn't I didn't realize that I was really starting to compete in the Sarah Connect world. I mean, to a point, wow. yeah, to a point where I was starting to get a lot of Sarah Connects. You know, and uh, one day this German guy comes knocking on my door. And he shows up to my lab and, and, I, and he's like, you know, I look at him and he's looking at me and he's like, he's looking around the laboratory and the laboratory was like a dump, you know, it was really small and no big deal. Right. And he, his next words, I'll never forget. He looks at me, he's all, this is, this is, this is a, a no sign. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, do you know that you're competing against Glidewell when it comes to receiving Sarah connects? <laughs> and I'm all, I was like, really, <laughs> you know? And at that time, wow. I thought it was cool, right? Because I was like, that is so cool. Because Sarah Connect has just hit the market. So nobody really knew what to do with it and stuff. Um, and at the end, uh, he was, he was, he was basically, his name was Norbert Ulmer. And he basically was the one who brought InLab to the United States. And, uh, and when he came to visit me, all he said to me was, uh, you know, would you be willing to educate what you do? And I said, are you saying to, Sarah, to doctors? And he's like, no, uh, to laboratories. And I said, you know, I, I, all I thought about was my parents at that moment, right? I kind of thought to myself, you know, if, if my parents didn't know digital, you know, who would teach them or who would, who would take them to this level, right? Uh, and, uh, and I remember he took me out to P.F. Chang's. We were sitting there and I looked at him and, and I said, yeah, you know, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's just, I'll use my place. We'll start educating. There was a there was a guy named Mike Sirius that was also doing a very similar thing, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's how in lab on demand then grew. Uh, wow! Then we started just educating labs. We started educating doctors. We started uh, doing all this stuff. And the more I educated, the more my laboratory uh, grew in the Seric world. Uh, so where we stand today, I mean, to be honest with you, um, we. We receive about five to six hundred Sarah Connects uh, a month. Uh, we only do business with digital doctors. We don't do business with analog because we don't play well with them. 
uh, when we receive a case that's analog, we have a little table about this big that we pour up models on. <laughs> you know, there's no Pindex machine. <laughs> there, there's nothing. So I have a lot of people that come and visit me from all over the world. And, and to be honest with you, it's a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting uh, look when, I, when, I, when they walk in and they, and they kind of see all the pans and they're all empty with just a lab slip on it, you know. Right. And fingers going and and yeah, we we just don't we don't we don't go analog, you know. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, you know, you know, a lot of people say, you know, uh, back in the day, I remember my dad, you know, when he used to have dental other de dental lab owners come into the laboratory. I remember he used to cover up his pans, right? Because you know, he would just turn it around. Hey, hey well, you know. So what do you want? <laughs> I mean, like, what are you here? You know, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I kind of I remember when when Norbert asked me that question, right? I remember thinking to myself, you know, if I if I teach everybody, right, is that going to be a bad thing, right? Because right now I'm the king of the hill, right? Because I got this ugly looking laboratory that basically had like you know the lights were horrible, you know, we had a little section in the back. At that time, and all I thought to myself was, you know, if we can change the industry, right, we'll change everything. And uh, and if we don't educate what the future looks like, they're all going to be just sitting behind the bench and sort of fighting, you know, the the Seric or the digital flow, you know. And uh, honestly, it was it was a great one of the greatest things I've ever done. Not just because you know we 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 we've grown so much and stuff like that, but because to be honest with you, you know, I I, I look at my parents, my mom. She, she, she fought cancer and, uh, you know, she takes vacations now and, and she knows now what, what business is about, you know? And so, and it was, and if it wasn't for digital, I don't know if I would have done that. I, I don't know if this is the path that I would have taken. Wow. Know? Digital, digital certainly changed your world. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the open mindedness of a, of a new world view through Seric changed yeah. your world how how amazing is that so uh Seric on demand is is certainly uh the focus of of a lot of doctors and a lot of uh, laboratories right now that's what you've been uh, pouring a lot of your uh, knowledge your energy your yeah. your vision into it uh you have people from literally all over the world yeah. tuning in and learning and uh beginning their journey or expounding on their journey learning new horizons that's that's truly amazing did you ever think that your reach or your impact was going to be as 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 extensive as it has been developing in the last couple of years no i i, I didn't i didn't think that we would get to this place right you know i i, I thought to myself i'm just gonna i just want to do have a laboratory that i would be able to just be be what i wanted you know and and what i wanted was digital and that's what I thought that the path was going to take. And and now all of a sudden, you know, you know, when you say, you know, people, it's funny when I do courses, you know, people show up from New Zealand, you know, um, now we're doing online courses and stuff like that. And uh, and so, yeah, I, this this has really caught me by surprise that at the end, you know, we were going to help so many laboratories. We were going to help so many doctors and we were going to help our industry sort of move on you know, and, and sort of bring down the barriers of, I need to always use my, my, my hands, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that you don't, just because you're using, you know, technology, it's a tool, just the same way a brush would be, just the same way a spatula would be. It's, it's all, it's all a tool. You can, you can mill something or print something and make it your own if you wanted to, you know, it's just how you create your own workflows. And so uh, for us, we created those workflows and, and we succeeded behind our workflows. And so with everybody jumping on and, and like you said, you know, um, you know, coming from different parts of the world and stuff like that, uh, it was, it was definitely a blessing. And, and to be honest with you, I don't, I, I, I think about it. I'm like, wow, you know, I can't believe it, you know, uh, cause I'm just, I'm Frankie and, and I'm a dental tech and that's what I am, you know, and that's what I've always been. So, it is what it is. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's been cool and, and definitely a very fun ride. And, how amazing. You know, go ahead. How, how amazing that, that, uh, that your, your name is, is going to certainly be part of history when it comes oh. to the, the evolution of, of, 
of this uh, in, in this industry, in, in this industry. How, how, how amazing. Now, you, you have been, again, as, as we mentioned, you've been pouring a lot of your energy, a lot of your wisdom, a lot of your knowledge uh, and, and a lot of your passion into developing this platform where people can come all over the world, learn and improve on, on their on their skills, improve their their life obviously through understanding uh, different uh, methodologies, concepts, principles, all these things. Yeah. But uh, what, what do, do you have something uh, in store? Are you working on something? What, what's, what's coming up uh, in the future? Because after a year like 2020, we, we are definitely um, expecting the unexpected now. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's funny, right? You know, when we ask ourselves, you know, where, where we're at today, um, you know, I started with Sarek and, and InLab and, and, and Serona mainly because at that time it was the only system that really was the full circle, right? It started digital from doctors and then, you know, it, it went to the laboratory and then we would be digitizing it. Then it went back to the doctor and it was just a, a, a workflow that no other company had, you know? And so, you know, for me, uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people would come and or, or maybe email me or ask me and say, you know, why is it that you pick InLab when, you know, 3Shape is better or ExoCAD is better and stuff like that? You know, I own 3Shape. I have 3Shape. You know, I have a lot of other systems. I don't have ExoCAD, but I do have, you know, other other systems out there. And so when we ask that question where we want to go, you know, I believe that in the past couple of years, uh, what you've noticed is, is that, you know, it's kind of like Apple, right? Back in the day, Apple was sort of like this, this you know, had the Apple phone. And then you had the Apple and then you had this. But eventually Apple, even Apple had to come out with, you know, publisher to work on Apple. Right. And so what I think I, I, I saw was in the past couple of years uh, that everything is just kind of opening up more. Right. And so those workflows now are becoming even even a lot easier. So if you ask me what what's what's next is sort of something that we're already working on as we stand today. So our laboratory about two years ago, we only did business with Sarah doctors. We didn't do business with Itero doctors. We didn't do business with three shape, uh, you know, care stream, all that stuff. So about two years ago, we announced that, that maybe it might be even two years and a half, maybe a little bit more. Um, but we announced that we were opening up our doors to other systems and we did. And, uh, you know, we get we get some three shape now we get uh, trios, we get a lot of stuff, but the workflow is still the same. It doesn't matter as long as it comes in digital, we will accept it. And then we just go down our path that we use, whether we use three shape, whether we use in lab, whether we use whatever it is that, you know, blue sky bio, we use a mm. lot. Um, and so so when it comes down to it, our education, believe it or not, is starting to also feel the push. And uh, we're, we're really thinking about our next move. And our next move, which was before COVID, uh, we were going to start doing ExoCAD courses, three shape courses. Uh, wow. So more wow. or less just open up our laboratory because now that we have doctors that have trios and have, uh, you know, it's sort of the same concept. Okay, listen, because I'll get a phone call and, and that phone call will say something like, hey, I, I need a digital denture, but I only have an Omnicam, but I just got the the new trios. Can I scan it with that? Or I have Itero. Can I do that? And, you know, for me as a laboratory, it doesn't matter. You know, I just want the digital scan. That's all I want. And so I want to be able to open up those doors. And so one of the things that happened before the COVID was uh, we created uh, this year, we created something called AA Dental, uh, uh, Dental Academy. Um, so if you go onto our website on aadentaldesign.com, uh, you're going to see on the top section, where it says Academy now. And so that Academy will basically show all the courses uh, that, that are going to be moving forward. So we're going to, we're going to basically come out with a course called, you know, Sarek meets ExoCAD, right? Wow. And, uh, and so it's going to be the flow. How, how do you work with Sarek and then use ExoCAD? And, you know, and I think that the next step is going to be, you know, if you're a trios doctor, how, how do you, uh, three shape comes in and this is the workflow. Uh, you know, if, if, if I have a, a plan, a, a prime, scan, I'm sorry, a, a plan Mecca, uh, how does that work, you know, throughout the whole thing? Because again, you know, now all the avenues sort of go with different equipment, right? I can have a, I can, I can basically get a case from a prime scan uh, doctor and then design it in ExoCAD and mill it with my MCX, you know, five. 
you know, mm. and that's sort of, you know, again, the tools help the workflow. And it, wow. all you really need to know is all the connections. And uh, that is going to be next for us. Uh, you know, we do we do a lot of courses right now, the power of InLab, which now we're also online. So a lot of our courses now, um, we, we, simul we have them here. Uh, but then if you want to join us online, uh, we actually hired, a, a, I mean, one of the one of the top guys that I know, at least, you know, in the dental. Uh, his name is Jonathan Ayala. Um, he he comes in. Uh, and so he just broadcast the, the course live. And so I interact with everybody. Uh, for, so like when we have the, um, the the software courses, we just send them all the cases that we're going to be working live and we work at the same time with them. Right. So it's like if they were here. Right. They, right. they can inter interact with us. You know, we don't open it up to 100 people. We open it up to 10 people. And then if they want to work from home, uh, they're able to work here if they want to come here. So it's kind of like they're here, but they're not. And these people are over there. And so it's it's like if you're taking the course live. Uh, it's a digital that, work. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a digital workflow. Yeah, yeah there you go. It's a digital <laughs> workflow. Yes. And, uh, and it's kind of funny because so we just did uh, the power of all on four or the all on X, as we call it. Uh, and then we also did the, the power of digital dentures. And so what we did was we pre-milled all the materials and we shipped it out to everybody, right? We shipped it out so that while we were working here, they were working at home. And so uh, Jonathan has a bunch of cameras set up in the whole entire place. So that way, if you're, you're, you're staining something, uh, they can see it and then you, they do it. And then when we want to talk to them, we walk up to this one camera, all right? We smile. Hey, so uh, show me your case. They'll show the case. So it's very, very, very interesting, interactive. And, uh, and I'm very excited to all the different courses that we're going to have. We're gonna, I mean, eventually we have right now maybe about 10 courses that we do. And we're probably going to go all the way up to 20. And it's, it's wow. basically how the courses are based upon how our laboratory runs. We're, we're about 20 employees now or 20 technicians strong now all together, not all technicians. We have, you know, our, our stuff, but how we do things here is what we will teach everybody. And whether you're a dental lab or, or, or a dentist, it doesn't matter to us. Wow. That is, that is truly amazing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the links for those of you that are, that are watching on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, all the links are going to be included in the description of, uh, of this um, podcast or this video if you're watching on YouTube. So no worries. Uh, you can find uh, Mr. Frank Acosta on these links. We're going to have the links to the academy, everything there. Frank, it has certainly been quite the journey for you. And <laughs> uh, condensing that into under uh, an hour has been amazing. We yes. thank you so much for uh, for being generous with your time, sharing your stories, sharing your experiences, and we hope to have you soon. Oh no, have, hey, have listen. You back soon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, like I said, whenever just reach out and 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 I'm here. You know, so again, we get, we'll, we'll we'll coordinate it, but uh, but definitely uh, we'll see if we can do this again. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, and uh, and I hope to see you soon. Hopefully in Chicago. Hopefully in Chicago. Let's hope so. Again, thank you so much for accepting the invitation. It has been a pleasure and honor speaking with one of the pioneers of digital. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Acosta has been with us today. Go follow his page, connect with him, and we will see you on the next episode of the Dental Today podcast. Till next time. Thank you.